everyone. Welcome everyone to our Branding Brilliance Masterclass with Kerry. We are super lucky to have us joining, um, have her joining us tonight. And I'm going to be managing the chat and people entering people into the rooms and um, making sure everything runs smoothly. So I'll be here as sort of tech backup. But um, I thought I'd start by introducing you to the amazing Carrie, who doesn't she give a beautiful, vibrant pop of colour there for us tonight? I'm sure we're going to be learning some great tips. <laughs> so Kerry and I actually met, well, it it must be getting close to 12 years ago, Kerry, because Andy, my little boy, was um, about 16 days old when we met and it was at a kindergarten orientation for our eldest daughters and um, Kerry came over to help me because I was struggling with a newborn. It was actually the first time I'd taken him out and um, tried to do something where I was coordinating um, multiple children doing multiple things. And um, she came and helped me with this newborn I was struggling with. <laughs> and ever since then, we've been friends. So um, we are very lucky to have her tonight. She's She's been styling me since those days where I really needed help to get out of that mum frump. And um, I think over time, he, more and more people realised that she had these incredible talents for helping style people and um, to, to just help them to, to show their best um, self and um, in the most flattering possible way. So more and more people started asking you, didn't they, Kerry, can you help me? Can you take me shopping? Can, can you tell me what to wear? Until she realised that perhaps this is my calling. Perhaps I really need to be helping people with this. And now she's styled so many people for major events, um, all sorts of all sorts of occasions from just people wanting to feel better about themselves to people needing to look good for really important occasions. And I feel like she's my secret weapon. The My confidence has grown exponentially since I met Kerry. And the more and more she worked with me to improve, um, you know, how I present myself, the 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 more I've benefited. And now she's doing it um, for lots of people and is going to help you with some hints and tips tonight. But of course, as your confidence grows, so will your business. And as, it, as you're showing up um, online and in person as a more polished version of yourself, the best version of yourself, um, you want to be attracting people to you. So you are your brand. You represent, um, you know, your company, but you are your brand. And that is super, super important. And how you show up in the world is how you're going to um how you're going to exist within your business and it's going to impact who you attract to you. So having a little bit of a confidence boost and some styling tips from Carrie and also learning a little bit about what is styling and why it's important is going to be um, really good to give you a bit of an overview. So also one last thing I'll share before we dive, um, dive into it and I hand over to Kerry is that everybody who has managed to make it here live tonight will be um, put into a prize draw at the end. And But also thank you to those of, uh, of you watching the replay because we know that this time doesn't necessarily suit all of our people from all over um, the world. So we're grateful for you too for joining us and um, catching the replay. So Kerry, I'm going to hand straight over to you and I'm going to clear the decks and, and write some notes and um, monitor the chat and the waiting room. So I can't wait. Um, I always learn something from you. So over to you. Thank you, Christina. I really appreciate that. And thank you to everyone that is on this call tonight. There are some places there that I have never heard of before. I know it's a big night on TV. 
some of us are interested instead of origin i'm not if you hear any screaming or carry on in the background of my room that's my kids because they are watching state of origin but we will just block out and zone all of that out and tonight i've got some amazing tips to show you and some great information that's really going to be a bit of a a light bulb moment for some of you and some of you will be like aha moment and there's going to be a, a lot a lot of information so i hope you've got a notebook ready or uh, your phone or a laptop to take down some notes to uh, throughout the, the this, it, not the call the webinar this evening we are going to have an opportunity for questions at the end if there's any question that you would like to ask if you during the, the presentation, if you just want to put it into the, the comments and Christine will monitor the chat and then she will collect all the questions and then she we will answer them for you at the end. So just to keep it running smoothly, I won't answer any of them until I've actually finished the, um, the presentation. But one of the biggest things I want for you all to understand about, you know, making a change to your wardrobe and improving your style. The biggest thing that you're going to get is a boost in your confidence. Now, when you feel more confident about yourself, when you know that you look nice and you feel nice, your confidence actually goes like this. It goes up quite quickly. And I've proven it to myself over the years. And I've actually, I see it happen every day when I see ladies that come into my styling studio for personal styling sessions and I can't believe the change that I actually see in them. They don't realize it at the time, but I know it does impact them because they give me the feedback afterwards. They come back and see me again or they send me a review and it, it really is that wow factor. And I'm going to show you how we can create that for you because as Christine said, this is your business and you are your brand. You are the person behind your business. And people are looking to you, how you look, how you present yourself, what sort of vibe you give off, what energy do you give off, how do you dress. Everyone makes a judgment in the first split seconds that they meet you. And when you are trying to grow a business, this is crucial that you make, you know, those first impressions are, are really, really good. So first impressions do, do make a good impression. So I'm going to start with the slides. I'm just going to share my screen. And going back to, I just want to say this now, Christine did mention me about wearing pink. I do a lot of Zoom calls and I have noticed that certain colors do really stand out on a, on a Zoom call. So if you're on a Zoom call where there might be 50, 100, 200 more people on a Zoom call, then and maybe you want to be noticed. Maybe you want your questions answered because you put your hand up wear a pop of color or have something really bright bright picture behind you because it really stands out because the person actually presenting uh, in a zoom call is just seeing a sea of pretty much monotone black and white and sort of neutral colors but bright pink red green and orange those are the colors that really really stand out so you can really pinpoint people um, when you are on a zoom call and there is a lot of people so that is a one handy tip for a Zoom. Okay, so let's share the screen and get started with our, no, get started with our presentation. Okay, so your personal style and that your personal style is your personal style. It is your personality. It is who you are. It is how Mary, you want we, to be seen. We can't see your screen just yet. Right. Okay. 
you can see me. We can see you, but not the screen. Do you, you have got this share screen button? Oh, hang on. Now it's coming up. Coming up. Yep, you can see me. Yep, and now we can see the presentation. Yep. That's it. Good. All good. Thank okay. you. Okay. So your personal style, and that is exactly what your personal style is. It is how you want to be seen. It's how you are perceived. It's how you turn up each day. If you want to just rock around in your trucky pants and your Ugg boots and be really ultra casual, then that is absolutely fine. And, you know, there will be a certain stigma attached to how you present yourself in that way. If you want to have a look of power or a person of authority, then you are going to wear something completely different to just wearing trackies and your Ugg boots. You want to, you will probably be wearing a suit or something with structure or a bright color that's making people think, oh, look at me, I need to pay attention to her because she knows what she's going to talk about. So your personal style is very important and it's up to you how you want to have that come across to, to people. So what is personal style? This is, this is what we're going to have a look at in the webinar this evening. We're going to look at what actually is personal styling and what it means. We're going to look at the benefits of personal, style, of personal styling and the benefits of having someone help you with your style. We're definitely going to look at the importance of color because that to me is number one above styling. We're going to also look at body shapes. We are going to look at the perfect wardrobe. So how to create a perfect functional wardrobe that you can wear all year round, that you don't have to change every season and one that isn't fast fashion. And then we are going to have a look at accessorizing as well. So these are all the things that I discuss with my ladies when they come and see me in my styling studio. When people book in for personal styling, they book a three hour time slot. And this is everything that we cover. So it really is a full on workout for them because after we sat down and had a bit of a chat and worked out what we what I'm helping them with in the, in the first half an hour, it's then literally the rest of the time is I'm throwing clothes at them and they are trying them on and on and on and it's just a full on workout, but very, very productive at the end of it. So this is what we are going to look at this evening. So a little bit about me first. So as Christine mentioned, I met her about 15 years ago through school and my background is beauty therapy. I've worked with photographers. I've been a makeup artist. I've done lots of things that I've loved and lots of traveling. But unfortunately, about seven years ago, I got diagnosed with breast cancer. And um, when I was going along that journey and, and meeting other ladies that had uh, were going through breast cancer as well, I was discovering the lack of confidence that these women had. And it, you know, it was it was earth shattering. Some people, it really, really was, especially if they'd had one breast removed or they'd had two breasts removed. They just didn't know how to dress for their physical changes that they were that they were experiencing. And I knew from my styling experience that I was able to mentor them and coach them and help them because I knew that if they looked normal and if they started to feel a bit normal then their confidence would actually come back so I was just doing a, a bit of styling out of my spare bedroom at home I had a couple of racks of clothes and this is where I started styling a few ladies and then as all girls we all want more, more clothes. So then I had to move into my styling studio to allow myself to have more racks of clothes. But it gave me the opportunity to help ladies of all ages and children to show them how to dress for their, for their body shape and for their coloring. And especially for these ladies going through breast cancer um, or, or post breast cancer, and that post their treatments that I was actually able to help them give them a boost of confidence. And they were able to come and see me in a, in a private secure space. And I could see the change and the difference that I was making to them. So I do one-on-one -on -one styling sessions. I do big events. 
I also do group styling sessions. I do keynote speaking about styling. It's just something that I love and just comes very natural to me. And I just absolutely love empowering women with the information that I know. It's like doing signing up for a mini course when you don't know how to do something. You go and sign up and do a course, you learn how to do it, and then you feel a lot more confident. Well, this is exactly it. This is what I'm showing you, ladies, this this evening. So what exactly is personal styling? So it's about helping you with the way you look and you feel, boosting your confidence, helping you with your appearance. And personal styling is actually just about creating an optical illusion. It is as simple as that. We are creating an optical illusion for the person that's actually looking at you. So by creating an optical illusion, I mean we are camouflaging areas that you don't like and we're highlighting areas that you do like. So we highlight areas to draw attention away from the areas that you don't like. So it's just exactly like makeup. Highlighting and contouring with makeup, we're doing exactly the same thing with clothes. And our clothes are what I class as our tools. Clothes are the tools to make us feel better, to make us look good and to give us that boost of confidence. And in my online styling course that I have, this is I show you how to do this with your clothes. I show you how to camouflage and highlight. And once you know how, how to do these little tips and tricks, it just makes everything so much easier in the morning when you get dressed. But first of all, I'm just gonna have a little bit of a pep talk and then I do this with all of my ladies that come and see me. Let's talk about clothing and its size. Now size literally is just a number or a letter that gives manufacturers and retailers a gauge to know whether their clothing is on the smaller size or on the larger size. There actually is no true sizing. And I know a lot of you will agree with me. And especially when you're buying online, so many things are made in China and sizing is just all over the place. So what I would like you to do is from now on, if any of you do get hung up on, on the size of your clothing, and you feel really bad that you have to say, for example, go up a size and you, or you don't like that number, you've never been that number or that letter before, then think of it as when you buy a pair of shoes. When we go to a shoe shop, we find a pair of shoes that we love and then we try them on and we might have to go down a size and we might have to go up a size. But at the end of the day, we don't care what size it is when we walk out of the shop, as long as that shoe fits our foot, we are happy. And that's how I believe we need to look at clothes. The other thing you can do is cut the sizing tag out of your garment because nobody knows what size clothing you are wearing except you. So if you don't tell anybody, then nobody has got any idea. If you look nice and your clothes fit you well and they're not too big and they're not too tight, then no one is even going to think about what size of clothing that you're wearing. That's my first pet talk, my first rule. The second one, do not judge your clothes on a hanger. And I'm talking about when you're going shopping. You have to try everything on. If you do not try your clothes on, then what happens is we get home and then something's not quite right when, when, when we put them on. The other thing I don't want you to do is buy something when it's on sale and it's absolute bargain, so it might be reduced from $100 down to $20 and you're just going to pick it off the rack. I don't want you to do that unless you actually try that garment on as well. This will actually save you money if you try the clothes on when you are in the shop because otherwise they will just get home, they get put in your wardrobe. When you actually do put them on, that's how you look at yourself in the mirror. Something's not quite right. Something's not happy with how you're not happy with how you look and then it just goes back in the wardrobe again with the tags on because we can't be bothered to take it back to the shop. So online shopping is the absolute worst for this unless you actually really know the styles that you are buying online and you know how the fabric feels and the fit then often and I've done this so many times and I've done it twice to myself this year with two dresses this year I've bought them and I've even measured myself off the sizing charts 
but still something's not quite right. And when I put them on, it's like, I'm not feeling it. And then what do we do? We blame ourselves. We say, oh, we're too fat or we're too this, we're too this. When actually we've just completely chosen the wrong garment, the wrong style for our body shape. So those are my two utmost rules. Try everything on and don't be hung up on the size of the, the garment and on the clothing. Now the shopping pain points. If I had a dollar for every lady that saw me and said that she absolutely hates shopping, I would be so well off. I really, really would. It's the most, these pain points that are listed here, these are the most common things that I hear from ladies that come and see me. They find shopping centers crowded and very overwhelming. We find that the salespeople are usually like 20, 30, 40 years younger than what we are. I've got no idea what our, what we're going through with menopause or, you know, what our shape and size is. They're just some skinny teenager usually working in the shop. It also takes time. It takes energy. It's very stressful trying on clothes because if there's no one in the changing room there to get as another size, we've got to get dressed and then we've got to go back out, out again. And it's just... It's just a lot of hassle. Feeling you've been judged, everyone else in the changing room looking at you. And it's that lack of confidence. And also another big one is people just don't know what to what to look for as well. So those are the biggest pain points. And I'm sure a lot of you can totally relate to, to those pain points and probably are nodding your heads and going, yep, 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 yep. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to start my styling studio so that people could come to a secure private environment where they don't have to keep getting dressed and undressed and going from shop to shop. It's a one-stop shop and it's just me and you and there's absolutely no judgment whatsoever. I tend to have a habit of being quite direct with people and saying, nope, that looks terrible. Get it off. Let's try the next thing. Colour analysis. Now, when I have my appointments with my ladies, my personal styling sessions, this is the first big thing that we talk about. Colour will make or break your outfit. And I believe that getting your colours right is far bigger and far more important than actually having your style right for your body shape. You can wear a shapeless sack, but if it is a colour that suits you, it will look absolutely amazing. If it's the wrong colour and it's shapeless, it's going to look doubly worse. And this is what will happen. So when we look at colour, we are looking at your eye colour, your skin colour and your, your hair colour. This is how I choose the colours for each person. So if your hair colour is going to change dramatically, so, so for example, your uh, brunette and then you might go blonde or you might be um, blonde and then you go grey or, or silver. This is when your colours will completely will completely change. The same as if you get a spray tan. If you're quite pale and then you go and get a nice dark spray tan, you will find that you can wear a lot more colours than what you normally can without your tan. Now, colour is only important to the clothing in your top section, so from your waist up to your neck. So that does include scarves, as scarves are all around your neck. This top section of your body where you wear colour, this radiates onto your face and has an impact on how your skin looks, how your eyes look, and it can even change the tone of your hair. And this is so relevant in most people that you've got to see it to actually believe it. And you can do this for yourself. And in my online styling course, I show you exactly how to do this with, with colors and with your clothes to make sure that you do get the right color. So when we wear the right color, so if you look at the, the screen on the bottom row where the cool shades are, I suit cool tones. So what, Cool tones means is I suit the clear, cool, sharp colors. So warm tones are the, the top row and the warm tones are a lot more muted, a lot more wishy-washy, even a bit dirtier looking. Now, the easiest way I remember the difference between warm and cool 
is cool colors i think of the three c's cool it's crisp it's clear and there's clarity in the colors and i think of ocean colors all your blues are always cool colors you've got all the blues aquas and turquoises and then you've got the bright blue sky in the middle of the day going right up into space where you get the really deep blues and even the deep purples going into space rainforest colors and rich green colors of the rainforest now your warm colors are a bit wishy-washy a bit more muted and a bit dirtier looking now because i'm such a visual person this is why i'm giving you um things to remember and visualize them by depending on which way you learn so by describing the cool colors like ocean colors and rainforest colors that's going to really resonate with someone who's very visual and also a great way to remember um, as well. So your warmer colors, I think of the sun, the sun is warm. So you have your sunset colors and your sunrise colors and all the beautiful pinks and oranges and yellows that go with those tones. And also the colors of the earth. Australia is a very hot country. There are brown dirt, there's brown dirt, orange dirt, red dirt, all those real earthy tones. So on the bottom row, so my colouring based on my hair colour, my eye colour and my skin colour, I suit cool colours. And I hopefully you can see that the, the, I look better in those pictures with those cool tones as opposed to the colours in the top row. I feel that the colours on the top row make me look a bit more washed out, especially that first one on the left, that blush pink, that makes me look completely washed out compared to the one the turquoisey one directly underneath the first one on the left underneath where the makeup is exactly the same but the colors of my eyes pop more there's more natural blush coming through in my lips and my cheeks so if you are not a makeup person and you don't wear makeup that is absolutely fine but you need to make sure you get your colors right if you wear, if you don't wear makeup and you wear the right colors, you don't need to wear makeup because your skin complexion is brighter. The, the intensity of the color in your eyes is so much brighter. The shadows around your eyes or anywhere on your skin will completely disappear. If you wear the wrong colors and you're not a makeup person, it's going to be the complete opposite. You are going to look pale. You are going to look washed out. You are going to look tired. You are going to feel like you're just not feeling it today. And when you wear the right colors, color gives you energy and makes you feel good. Now, this pink is one of my favorite colors and so is electric blue. And they are part of my brand colors in my studio. And when I wear these colors, they're vibrant colors. I just feel really good in them. I feel like I step into this suit of armor like i've got my superpower suit on and it just energizes me but when i wear the wrong colors like the ones in the top row i get this level of energy that's way lower than when i'm wearing the right colors some of you may never have even been aware of this when you wear color but now that i've mentioned it to you take note of how you feel when you wear certain colors take note of when people compliment you and say oh wow, that color looks amazing on you. Have a look at what color you are wearing. Even if they say, wow, you look so good today. It's often the color that you're wearing, not necessarily the style. Now for those black lovers, those girls that like to wear black, black is not classed as a color. It is just a neutral color. Black is black, white is a tone, but there are many shades of white. So if you are someone that does favor to wear a lot of black, I dare you to just try and wear a bit of color. And maybe just start with accessories, some jewelry or a scarf, or maybe even some bright colored nail polish. I know it can be quite daunting for people that have never worn color to actually step into wearing color. And I, I've experienced this with ladies in my styling studio for example, I had one lady, she had long black hair. She wore all black all the time. And she was a very slim lady, very attractive lady. But colour was not her thing. And the reason she didn't wear colour was because 
she's been criticised from previous relationships and um, from her husband, but every time she put colour on, he, he, he criticised her. So then she just stopped wearing it and just wore black, which I think is a complete shame. But slowly, over 12 months, and it has taken her that long because she was quite um, damaged from it, she actually now wears colour, and now that she actually wears it without a look of fear. She actually wears it with a, a smile on her face. So if that's something that you are fearful of, colour, then just try it and just take some baby steps. And in my online styling course, I'll show you exactly how to do work out your colours and, and what to look for. And the key is you need lots of natural light, so don't be doing it at, at night time. Body shape is the next thing that's super important for you to work out, to know what styles of clothing to wear. Now, there's five body shapes, and you may be familiar with some of the terms. Hourglass, which is the top left one with the yellow, and then we go over to the right, triangle and pear that mean exactly the same thing. There are the shapes or pieces of fruit. That's what we're referred to as. We have rectangle, inverted triangle, and a round or an apple. Now, there is no perfect shape. It is just what you are. You are born with that shape, and your shape will not change unless you are really, really going to work out your muscles at the gym or you have some implants. You might have some butt implants to turn you from an inverted triangle to more of an hourglass. But realistically, the shape is what we are and that's what we are born with. It can thicken as we get older, we can thicken through through the middle. So then sometimes you might, if for example, you are an hourglass that as you go through menopause and later stages in life, then you may find that you might become more of a, a rectangle or a square or even round, which is just thickening through the waist. Now, it's really important to understand your body shape because you need to know what styles of clothes suit you for, for your shape. So for example, with a, a, an hourglass, we always focus on the, on the waist to highlight their waist because that's the smallest part of their shape. A rectangle person is very straight through the waist. So we want to actually create an illusion that she does have a waist. And again, I've just mentioned that word illusion. We're just creating optical illusions to change your shape. Inverted triangles. So she tends to be a lot broader across her shoulders. So we want to even out her lower section of her body. And as you can see in that dress, if she was wearing a pencil skirt, like the hourglass girl is, so I'm talking about this lady here, if she was going to wear this pencil skirt, it would really highlight how broad her shoulders are because we've made her look really, really slim there. So by having that full A-line skirt on her, we've actually made her lower section look wider than what it actually is. And it's actually almost created an illusion of an hourglass shape. Somebody who is round or a apple shape again we want to create a waist and someone like that is going to be kind of usually has a bit of a larger bust as well so the narrowest part of the midsection is right under the the bust so that's where we want to style her to create the illusion of a small waist and that's where an empire line if any of you have ever heard of an empire line dress that's where a dress actually cinches in under the bust and then it just free falls down. Very, very flattering for a round, um, round or an apple shape. So again, in the styling course, I actually go through lots of different outfits and show you all the, the different ways that you can dress body shapes. There are so many ways that you can do this and it's not just through your clothes, it's also through your accessories as well, your shoes, your scarves, your necklaces and your bags. So let's have a look at a functional wardrobe. Now I believe a functional wardrobe, especially here in Newcastle and uh, Northern New South Wales, 
we don't need to be having the water and, and for the Queenslanders as well. Maybe in Tassie it's a little bit different. But we don't need to be having a wardrobe that we pack away at the end of summer and then bring out our winter wardrobe and vice versa. I believe if you do that, you have got too many clothes and you will also forget what you have packed away. So if you can have a functional transseasonal wardrobe, and transseasonal means that we can wear it all year round, it can be worn in all seasons, we just have to layer to warm up or wear less layers for for the um the warmer weather so a functional wardrobe is one that we can just mix and match all year round and don't need to pack away everything goes together so you, you look at the example that i've got on the screen the hanging clothes on the left they are all block plain colors apart from that one print a functional basic wardrobe needs to be exactly that it needs to consist of mainly block plain colors and only have about 20 to 30 percent of print when you have block plain colors you will find that you can mix and match items of clothing so much more easier than print if you have a wardrobe full of print you are going to end up with a lot of clothes clashing with each other and therefore you are going to end up needing more clothes and more space don't be one of the, a lady that maybe has three bedrooms and three wardrobes, one wardrobe in each bedroom, because I've seen plenty of those ladies. And we don't need to have five pairs of white pants or five pairs of black pants as well. Go through your wardrobe and keep the crucial ones that you wear to bits and love to death and you know that really, really suits you and keep those, get rid of everything else. And by getting rid of them, try and sell items of clothing or pass them on to friends or pass them on to a charity so your functional wardrobe 20 to 30 percent print and then the rest is is just block plain color so basically you should be able to stand at your wardrobe in the morning with your eyes shut hold out your hands grab two pieces of clothing pull them together and they should go together that's the idea of a functional wardrobe or a capsule wardrobe and we will go on to your accessories and they will all um, match as well. We'll talk about accessories in a little while. So let's have a look at some examples of what a functional wardrobe consists of. This is a checklist that I give all of my clients after they've had a styling session with me. And this is what we talk about when they are with me for a styling session. These, I believe, are the crucial pieces of clothing that you need in your wardrobe, in a basic wardrobe. I'm not talking about swimwear, I'm not talking about shorts, and I'm not talking about gym wear or sports wear. I'm just talking about smart, casual clothing, even going into uh, more smarter work wear. So I'm not saying that you have to have exactly those styles in the pictures. They are just an example. And as you can see, they're all just block, block, block plain colours. So the first thing I believe a functional wardrobe needs is jeans. Now I believe that jeans, bras and swimmers are the three hardest pieces of clothing that women find to buy and hate them. Jeans are actually my best selling item of clothing and the reason that they are is because I get ladies to buy a pair of jeans that actually fit properly and the key is to have stretch. If your jeans are like 100% denim, 100% cotton, and have no stretch, you are not going to have a lot of comfort there whatsoever. And one thing I do know since COVID, everybody's wardrobes, even in the corporate world, has be become a lot more relaxed and we want elastic. We want stretch because a lot of us are working from home now or maybe we're not moving around as much and we want comfort as well as looking nice. So you need to have stretch in your jeans. The other biggest point to note with uh, buying jeans is make sure that you go down a size. Most of us when we're trying jeans on find that they're so snug and feel so tight that we want to go up a size and we do go up a size. And what happens with jeans when we have worn them, even for a couple of hours or a day, they start to relax and then they start to slide down and then we're forever pulling them up and 
we get a baggy looking bum and saggy around the front bits and they just look a bit shapeless that unless you're going for that sort of look so those are my uh, pitching points for the jeans casual pants and casual pants i mean like a wide leg pant might be a pair of like linen pants or like a, a, a chino jogger type of pant also plain tops so as i've just mentioned in the functional wardrobe plain tops so you can have long sleeves you can have short sleeves you can have three quarter sleeves it's totally up to you and the sleeve will also the type of sleeve will also depend on your body shape and style which is something i also cover in my styling course as well camis now when i talk about cami i don't mean something that has to be hair slinky with shoestring straps and lots of lace i'm talking about a sleeveless top and preferably one that you can actually wear a bra with yeah so like this one down here that's what i call a camisole now some of you might be saying oh i can't wear that i don't like to show my arms i totally understand that a cami is a great layering piece great to wear under a jacket or a blazer great to wear under a coat or even something like a shirt if you wanted to wear it open instead of a um, buttoned up like that. But whilst I'm talking about that, ladies, think about how many blouses or shirts that button up you have in your wardrobe and that maybe they might be a little bit tight across the front or you don't like how they look when they're fattened up. Think about wearing them open as a lightweight jacket and putting a cami or something sleeveless underneath and just letting them open that hang open actually gives you a completely different look and it's worth trying out you'll be quite surprised before you think about throwing that shirt away denim jacket i love denim jackets i think they are a really versatile easy piece to throw on and they're timeless they don't date blazers love women in blazers blazers are just a little bit smarter or a lot smarter than a denim jacket but they don't just have to be like classed as a work wear item. A blazer looks great with a pair of jeans, a pair of sneakers and a t-shirt underneath. Don't think of a blazer as something really, really dressed up. So if any of you are in the corporate world or used to work in the corporate world, you might have a few blazers hanging up in your wardrobe, then try them on, put them on, roll the sleeves up, throw on them on with a pair of jeans and a pair of sneakers. It will give you a completely different look, but a really, really nice look as well the other essential item is a classic pair of black pants one that's just a really nice sort of classic style not too beachy not too corporate or they might be a bit more corporate but they're just that style that don't date and um, you can wear them for any opportunity that may come up and a go-to black outfit now what i mean by a go-to black outfit as opposed to referring to a little black dress or an lbd which were it was a term back in the 80s and the 90s i just call it a classic go-to black outfit so this is your outfit when you need something dressier and something nicer something comes up at the last minute it might be a cocktail party it might be a a, a nice dinner it might be a work event it might be a funeral it might be a meeting but you either haven't got time to go and buy something new or you don't want to go and buy something new but when you put this black outfit on whether it be a dress or a black pair of pants and a black top you always feel nice and you always look nice in it and nobody knows that you're wearing the same black outfit all the time if my go-to outfit was hot pink for example or a, a bright bold print every time i wore that but well, after the first time i wore it i'm going to get people are going to go oh she's wearing that outfit again she not got any other clothes if you wear black and no one notices it and you can change how it looks by changing your accessories putting on a different lipstick color different handbag different shoes even a different hairstyle so that's your go-to black outfit now let's have a look at accessories accessories play an essential part in styling and accessories don't have to be expensive i love buying accessories from la visa that's probably one of the, the cheapest and easiest places to go to There's so many places that do accessories now so many different clothing stores 
that do have a small section of accessories. So go and have a look at them. So let's start off with some jewelry option. Now, ladies, if you are bigger in the bust or you're quite broad in your top section, then a long necklace is going to be your friend. So a long necklace that is 90 centimeters long, not 70 centimeters, but 90. 70 centimeters will sit probably right on your bust line and will probably draw more attention to your bust than that, what you want it to do. Having a really long necklace actually creates the look of a V neckline and also the look of a vertical line. So if you are broader and larger in your top section, that's what we're trying to do with you is lengthen you and slim you down. So a long necklace is great. If you want to add width to your top section, then you would wear a high necklace and you would probably wear a chunkier necklace or something that's got a lot, lot more layers. Scarves are a great accessory. I don't really like to wear scarves fastened right up to the neck because if the scarf is too chunky, then it can just make your head look like it's bolted onto your shoulders and you've got no neck and it just squashes you down and the look of you. If you're living somewhere cold and it's really cold and you have to have your scarf right up to your neck, then once you get inside, please open it up and just let it hang like two vertical lines. Shoes. Now, this is the must-have checklist that I give to my ladies that come for styling, that if they haven't got these shoes in their wardrobe, this is what you need to get. You are not going to ever buy another pair of black shoes again. Nude coloured shoes are so versatile, they go with absolutely everything. Even if you're wearing all black, nude shoes look better than black shoes. Black shoes draw attention to your feet. We don't want people staring down at your feet longer than what they should be. So nude shoes, nude shoes, and there's so many different shades of nude. So the idea is to try and choose a color of nude that's as close to your skin tone as possible. When you are selecting your shoes, try and keep your toes as rounded or as pointed as possible. I know not everybody can wear pointed toes, but basically what I'm saying is stay away from square toes. Square toes are really on trend at the moment. They have been for the past 12 months. And they, yep, they're great if you're 18 or in your 20s, go for it. But I think, I feel that as you get into your 30s or in 40s and above, then we're doing everything to make ourselves look slimmer and look taller and square toes are not going to do it for you. So don't keep up with the trends if you are trying to create an illusion of height and slimming. So go for more of an oval or almond shaped toe and choose the nude as close to your skin tone as possible. And by nude, I also mean like your metallic colours. There's some Fabulous shoes around at the moment, even sneakers, white sneakers, I think are a must in the wardrobe. You don't have to have white, you could have nude, you could have metallic. There are so many good stores around that sell them, Mathers and Williams, you don't have to spend a lot on sneakers. If you are a little bit challenged with your height, then I suggest getting sneakers that have a platform sole as well just to give you that extra bit of height makes a massive amount of difference. And sneakers and pretty much ankle boots are just the go now. You can wear them with absolutely everything and you can dress up or dress down your outfit just by changing your shoes. Ankle boots, I think ankle boots are a staple in a wardrobe as well and a tan or a nude color and keep them as short a length as possible don't go for mid-length boots. They will cut your legs off and they will make you look a lot shorter. If you're going to go for a longer boot, then you need to go above the knee, over the knee. It's a lot more tiring than going right under the knee or mid-calf. So with your ankle boots, try and keep them as low as possible, especially if you are shorter. So tan, like the tan on the picture, is a fabulous colour and or uh, any sort of of nude color as well. So the benefits of personal styling. So once you know what colors suit you, once you know what style of clothes suits your body shape best, and you know how to create a 
functional wardrobe and you know how to accessorize and you have all of those accessories in your wardrobe, this means that your confidence is well on its way. And this is what I was saying earlier. When I see ladies and they leave my studio, they come in and I can see that they're quite nervous because they're not sure what to expect. And some of them open up to me and say they are nervous. And then three hours later, I kid you not, there's a spark in their eye and literally their body language has changed. They walk out of my studio standing far more upright and with this look of confidence and it happens all the time and it's just from having these little tips and tricks and applying them to your wardrobe so these are the biggest benefits and the best benefits that you need for, for yourself to give yourself that boost if you want to create that ripple effect into other areas of your life if you can give yourself that boost of confidence, it will impact your work life, it will impact your family life and everyone that comes into contact with you. It also will save you time and money. So like I said, having that functional transseasonal wardrobe, but like I said earlier, I'm not about fast fashion, but by all means, go and buy a couple of trendy items and a couple of seasonal items and add them to your wardrobe, but don't make it about doing that every season that you've got to go and buy a whole new wardrobe because it just becomes way too expensive and it's just not feasible. We can't do that and have the space. But once you get the idea of personal styling, you start applying it to yourself, then you start to look good and it means that you feel good. And like I say, you get that ripple effect going through to all areas of your life. And the ladies that I see and get back to me and give feedback to me are, are just proof of what what, um, what I'm saying and how important this is. So Kath, she came to me and uh, she was saying she was wearing the same old clothes. She was in a, bit, in a bit of a rut. She wanted to try something different. And I showed her how to mix and match her wardrobe. And, you know, she said she's never looked back. These are recent reviews that I got I've recently. Janina, I actually saw her. She came back in last week. She came to me styling, for styling a couple of um, months ago. And she walked into my studio last week and said, you do know what you're talking about? And I went, yeah, of course I do. Absolutely. I said, why do you say that? She said, because the first day I went out after my styling session, I walked into work. I was wearing one of the outfits I got from you. She said, and I can't believe how many people commented. And I went, well, there you go. <laughs> So not everybody believes what I say, they, but once they've actually tried on the clothes and then gone into the real world, then the compliments start to happen and then, and then they believe me. Sharon, she realised the importance of knowing what colours suited her best and she's experienced a massive difference in how she feels in every day, knowing that she's wearing the right colours for her wardrobe. Now, Jen, she was a, a corporate executive lady and she was a lady that really needed to plan her wardrobe two weeks in advance. She would need to know what she was wearing every single day, two weeks in advance. I kid you not. She sent me photos of how she flat laid out all her outfits and she had them stuck on her wardrobe. So come Monday morning, she knew exactly what she was wearing for the week. And she really struggled with how to put her outfits together and what to wear and how to accessorize. So I really helped her with that. And then she just sends me these photos now of, of her, her fortnightly outfit. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. And I keep saying to her that I'm actually going to do a post on social media about some of her flat lay photos. So follow me on socials and um, you'll hopefully see that soon. So again, why seek professional help? The benefits of hiring a stylist. Well, it's personalized advice for your shape and your colors, time saving and absolutely stress-free shopping. I do all the thinking for you. You don't have to think of anything. I just throw clothes at people and just tell them to try it on and just be open-minded. Gives you that boost in confidence and self-esteem, which we've been talking about, which has that ripple effect into all areas of your life and also having seeking professional help through me you get the long-term wardrobe help and support and it also saves you money in the long run as well so 
So some of you are probably saying, well, that's not good. I don't live anywhere near you, Kerry. So how am I, how are you going to help me? Okay. So I have got a online styling course. Now, this is a solution to all of your wardrobe and outfit issues. Now, I designed this styling course because, like some of you that are interstate, people were asking me how I could help them that weren't local to me and able to pop into the studio and see me, and they needed my help. So I created this online styling course, which is really easy to follow. It's broken down into short chapters. You can just... Watch it, stop it, and then go back to it. You know where you, you are all up. It goes just under two hours. You have it for life, so it's yours to access whenever you want. So you receive lifetime access. And, of course, you can watch it in your own time. And you can watch it in bed. You can watch it in your jammies. You don't have to be dressed up or looking nice to watch it. So you can watch it on your laptop or you can watch that on your, your mobile as, as well. So what does the course include? So it covers these areas. It covers how to choose your colors and I'll literally show you how to select the right colors for you with the clothes that you have in your wardrobe. I talk about the fabrics of your clothes. This is another really important thing that will make or break your outfit is knowing which fabrics to wear uh, the different shapes and sizes necklines and accessories are so really going to detail about necklines so depending on your shape or whether you're a small bust or a big bust neckline is crucial to your outfit and how to accessorize accordingly your top lengths are really important if you have a top that's too long it's going to make you look shorter if you have a top that's too short well then your tummy might be very visible and that might not be something that you are comfortable with so we really look at top lengths uh, with loose tops, fitted tops, how to how to wear their sleeve lengths. You would think that a sleeve length isn't important, but it is, and it does make a big difference to how your outfit looks. And again, how it's just another way to, another tip and trick to make you look taller and slimmer. Same applies to your pants and your jeans as well. There are little folds and tucks that we can do to without you having to go and have them altered that can make you look taller and slimmer as well shoes as i've mentioned i actually show you you can actually see the actual differences different shoes make and the different colors and when you see this like i said you will never ever go buy or wear a pair of black shoes ever again dresses not everybody wears dresses but there are certain styles of dresses and there's certain styles that are uh, relevant for different shapes and sizes. And there's lots of styling tips and tricks to create that perfect optical illusion, which I keep talking about. So the total value of this course is $14.99. And that's what I charge ladies when they come and see me for personal styling, they come for me for personal styling and they come for a color analysis, it's $14.99 and that's the value of this course. But for tonight, because Christine, and because uh, she's a great friend of mine and she came to me a while ago and she said to me that she really wanted to help the ladies in her team boost their confidence and help you grow your your businesses and i truly believe that you can you can do this i proved this to myself with myself when i first started styling i wasn't as confident as what i am now and honestly by wearing different clothes and the right clothes for you it will make a massive change to your lives and i'm not just saying that it's actually works so well that if anyone comes to me and says oh i'm actually waiting waiting to lose two or three kilos i say don't don't wait number one you're probably not going to lose two or three kilos but life's too short to be waiting don't put yourself on hold dress yourself for today why can't you just acknowledge yourself for today and how you look today today because when you actually look nice then you'll stop 
thinking that you need to lose weight and you'll just focus on everything else that really, really matters in, in your life. That is the knock-on effect of when you when you actually really, really um, pay attention to to what you're wearing and the clothing choices that you make. So for a limited time, I agreed with Christine that the course value is $14.99 and because I want to have, I'm sorry, I'm more than happy to help you ladies out. And I really, you know, I get so much enjoyment out of seeing the transformation in people. And that's what I want to be able to offer you. So for this Branding Brilliance webinar tonight, then I'm offering a special discount and offering the styling course to you all for $67. Am I crazy or what? $67. You can purchase the styling course, short online styling course for $67. As I said, it's only available for a limited time only. If you would like to purchase the course tonight, then all you need to do is scan the QR code on your screen now, and that will take you directly to a landing page where you can just put in your details, put in your credit card details, and you will get sent, be emailed your login details to the course straight away. So as I said, the login for it, the course is available for you at any time and all time and you can stop and watch it and watch it as many times as you like. So scan the QR code that's for $67 for tonight. So now I'm going to hand over to Christine. We're going to answer some questions and if any of you would like to take this opportunity to ask me anything, then please feel free to do so. I'm going to keep the QR code up on the screen, so I won't take that down, and I'll hand it over to you, Christine. Wow, Terry, I'm I'm still pinching myself at that offer that you put together. Thank you, because I really believe that this is going to make a big difference to people, whatever they do in their lives but absolutely it will have a flow-on effect to their business. Getting this kind of confidence, getting these sorts of tips sorted is, is huge and we've learned a lot tonight and um, that's a, a brilliant, brilliant content that you've put together for us for inspiration. And, you know, I even though you've been styling me for a while, I still need to go and look at my wardrobe and, and fix a few things because I learned quite a lot tonight. So... Thank you. That was amazing. And um, there was a key question that came up that you might be able to help um, with. Laurie says that she has no idea what body shape I am, no matter how many times I read about all the different ones. Is there anything, any advice that you can have that might make it a little bit easier for Laurie? Yes, if you've got a tape measure and maybe got somebody to help you, you can measure the width of your shoulders the shoulder to shoulder and you can also measure the width of your hips and if um i might have to give you the slide of uh, christine to, to send to her about the different body shapes but if you if your shoulder width and your hip width are similar and your waist is smaller measure your waist as well then that's an indication that you're um, an hourglass so it's about getting the shoulder measurement and the hip measurement and the waist measurement and just seeing if one area is, is larger or wider than the other. And based on the shapes that I mentioned earlier, so, so if your shoulders are measuring narrower than your hips, then that's probably a good indication that you are a triangle, for example. If your shoulders and your hips and your waist are all the same or very similar, and I'm talking, you know, give or take two and a half centimetres, it doesn't have to be exact, so two and a half centimetres or more, then that's when the, the, the shape will change. So if, if you're measuring the same or within two and a half centimetres of all the measurements for your shoulders, your waist and your hips, then if you are a tall person, 
then you are more than likely to be a rectangle. But if you are a shorter person, then what we call a short rectangle or a square. So that, that's a good way to, to do it. Hopefully that will help you. Oh, that's fabulous, Kerry. That that makes it um, more of a science and less of an art when you put um, numbers to it like that. So she should get a very clear indication of which one she is. So that's that's really helpful. Thank you. Um, let's see if there are any other questions that prop, prop up now. But um, <laughs> there are a few people that say, yep, I hate shopping for clothes. They get overwhelmed when they go into um, a shopping centre um, and I love the shoe analogy. It's like, yeah, we don't care what size the shoe is so long as it fits our feet. Why do we get hung up on everything else? That's so. That's such a big piece of this styling puzzle. So thank you for, for starting out with that and changing our perception of of clothing in the process. That's right. That's all it is. It's just looking differently. We are all conditioned into looking at a number or looking at a letter in our clothing and then we're conditioned into thinking whether it's big or small and what's acceptable what's acceptable and what isn't acceptable. And we just have to change that thought process and certainly educate our children. Um, or grandchildren or, or any younger girls or and boys that we come into contact with. Um, every time I use that analogy, it, it just makes sense for everybody and they get it. Mm, yeah, that was really, really powerful. Thank you. We've had a few people say, yay, um, Julie says awesome offer purchased. Dale's um, signed up for it. Thank you. That's wonderful that, you know, they've... Um, decided to invest in themselves. Well, we've got this amazing, amazing opportunity. But um, Laurie has a, a, a follow-up question. She asked, does the size of breasts change what shape you are as far as the measurements go? Um, she's very large chested. Yes, and also the position of the, uh, the, the breasts can do as well. So usually people that have got larger, larger breasts and, and heavier breasts, it will make them a lot more, can make them look a lot more rounded and um, broader through through their top section. One important thing I always say to my ladies is to make sure that you're always wearing a good fitted bra. Now, most of us put this task on the back burner and we might not go and get a bra fitting you know, five years or, or even longer. So if your breast size has changed, if you've lost weight, put on weight, or just there has been some changes, I would go and get measured and get refitted for a bra because that will actually change your shape more uh, than just the, the natural size that they are. I muted myself. Thank you. That's... um. It's good to know, I think, having that, it's almost like with our makeup is, um, I guess, an analogy that sort of makes sense to me. You wouldn't put, you know, foundation on without cleansing, I guess. Having good undergarments is just is like that as well. To put the clothing on top of, you need to have that foundation right. Correct. And shapewear isn't something that a lot of us, favor to wear because it can be so uncomfortable and you know we might be able to tolerate it for a couple of hours in an evening for a special event but shapewear has got a lot lot better over the past years and the, and the fabrics are a lot more comfortable and a lot more breathable so it definitely is worth looking into some good shapewear because it will actually help change your shape or certainly certainly make you look a lot smoother um, and more streamlined and again it once you know you feel a bit more like everything's held in and, and tucked away again that just gives you an extra feeling of confidence as well yeah, absolutely and Laurie says thank you that's very helpful so um I think that's that's all the questions that have have cropped up um but if there's 
If there's any more questions, feel free to come off mute or to type them in. Everybody's stayed right to the end. Um, Julie thanked, um, thanked you, Kerry. She had to um, duck away, but um, she was eager and, and purchased the course, so she can't wait to dive in. Um, and Christine's asking, how long will the $67 deal be available for? We, as, as we spoke earlier, that we will we, we will let it run for about a week or so because we know that there's a lot of ladies that will probably watch this back on recording. So I think that's something that Christine... Yeah, I will. I'll let people know when um, when it finishes, but we've certainly got it for um, for a few days. So uh, a little bit of time there for you. And also, if anyone um, would like to keep getting tips and tricks, and please follow me on my socials, as Instagram and Facebook are my my two ones that I favour. Um, I'm always putting new ideas on there and styling tips and tricks and mistakes. So, funny uh, reels. I'm funny reels as well. Um, doing live. So, yeah, please follow me if you want to find out more as well. Fabulous. Yeah, I'd highly recommend it because I will often um, scroll through and come across something that Kerry's posted and it's – I find that I learn quite a lot just by these little tips that, that Kerry might post here and there and um, entertaining bits and pieces as well. So really worth um, jumping on and, and following uh, whichever platform you prefer. So I think everybody's had their questions answered and um, everybody's been very engaged and um, seems to have really enjoyed tonight. So um, yeah, uh, Belinda says, thanks so much for your time. Debbie says, thank you very much. I think we've all, we're all taking away things that we can apply straight away. Amy is saying thank you too. And some of them have jumped straight in to get the course and get some extra um, information, but it will be available for a bit longer um, to allow for, you know, pay cycles and, um, and whatever as well. So... Thank you so much, Kerry. Thank you for that incredible deal. As they say in life, it's who you know, not what you know. So I feel very lucky to be connected to you. And thank you for extending that generosity to um, to my, you know, beautiful connections as well. So, um, oh, look, look, a few people are following you on Instagram as well. So thank you. Now, the, um, I do also need to quickly do a prize draw as well and um, I'm going to randomly scroll up and down through my participant lift and close my eyes and wherever it stops hopefully on a name let's see Sammy congratulations Sammy you won the prize tonight so send me a message with your postal address and I'm going to get your prize in the mail to you. And um, so thank you, everyone. To those of you who watched the replay, well done as well. Great to have you watching. And um, I will we'll let everybody go. Have a, Enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye, everyone.